Hi, I'm Ian Hancock, and this is part one of a two-part series showing how workspaces and access control can benefit team collaboration within System Architect. So what are workspaces? Well, workspaces were introduced in 11.3.0 of System Architect, and they allow users to more easily manage the versions of a single encyclopedia. Previously, version management was done by backing up encyclopedias, extracting and merging between the encyclopedias, which was a very lengthy and cumbersome process. Workspaces have brought this within the tool, offering a much easier workflow. In 11.3.1, history and property compare were added to the feature set of workspaces, making the identification of changes in a given workspace much easier. Since then, 11.4.0.1, has brought role-based access control, allowing workspaces to have permission management. These features, when put together, begin to lay out the roadmap for a true collaboration story. For more information about workspaces, take a look at the documentation found in the link below. Let's take a look at the scenario we're going to cover. Firstly, let's have a look at the team configuration. There are several teams which wish to build projects within a single encyclopedia. Their work will be published as a single architecture maintained in a single stream. Each team will work on a single project. The team members will work for a single team. And the team members need an area of the encyclopedia to work which is isolated from the other teams. This is the area where they will do their project work. They will be able to see each other's work but they will not be able to modify it, even in their own work area. Now let's take a look at the project configuration. The projects in this scenario will have minimal overlap the projects can start and finish at different times, and when a project is complete, all of the changes for that project will be contained in a single team work area, and all of the changes in that work area will be part of the project. When a project is ready for publication, the changes will need to be reviewed. This will require identifying the changes, as well as being able to see what changed. The changes will then require merging into the next version of the architecture, it will also be useful to be able to verify that the changes that have been merged are correct. Finally, the released architecture will be locked down. It will only be available for read-only access from this point onwards. OK, so now I'll take you through setting up and configuring access control and projects for this scenario. First, we're going to create a catalogue on our SQL Server. So select the SQL Server, choose OK. After a few moments the catalog's created. And now we're going to switch on instance level access control. The user interface for this isn't on by default. We have no encyclopedias currently attached, so we'll attach our sample encyclopedia. This is workspace test. These encyclopedias already exist on the server. Next we're going to create ourselves a new role. This is a read-only role. Basically giving administrative access but in read-only mode. So we add the administrator role and add the write-only role. And now what we do is we take the write-only role and disinherit it. This means take away the writing privileges. So it's an administrator without writing privileges. Now we'll create an administrator group that will administrate the encyclopedia. So a new group, give it a name and a description. We're going to add the active user, who is the administrator, to this group. We can see that in here. Now we're going to add this group to our encyclopedia. So there's an administrator on group on the encyclopedia. We have to assign a role for this group on the encyclopedia, which will be administrator. Drag the role administrator onto the group. Master Admin is an administrator of the encyclopedia. Next we'll create some groups for our teams. So let's create a new group for Team 1. 
and another group for team two. Now we need some users that are going to work in these groups. These users already exist on the Windows server. So we create them using the name of the Windows user, give them a audit ID and a description as required. Next we want to assign these users to the group. So if we take user 1, add them to team 1, you can see them added here. And take user 2 and add them to team 2. Again, we can see that here. Now we'll add our groups, our teams, to the encyclopedia. So it's team 1 and team 2. Again, you'll notice the italics, meaning that the permissions haven't been completed yet because we need to assign them a role on the encyclopedia. Now we're going to pick our read-only role that we just created. So let's add the role to the team. So Team 1 and Team 2 have full read-only access to the encyclopedia. Okay, now we've assigned the teams to the encyclopedia. We've made a read-only role available in that encyclopedia and assigned this read-only role to our teams. So our setup so far looks something like this. We have test admin who is a user in the master admin group. And the master admin group is an administrator of the workspace test encyclopedia. And we have our two teams with user one, a member of team one, user two, a member of team two, and both of those groups have read-only access to the Workspace Test Encyclopedia. And now we'll switch on Instance Level Access Control for this encyclopedia. When our users are using the encyclopedia, we'd like the group that they belong to to automatically be assigned to the work that they're doing. In order to do this, we set up a default instance level access control group for that user. To do this, we drag a group onto the ILAC group defaults for that user. So for user 1, we've added team 1, and for user 2, we'll add team 2. This will mean their work will automatically be tagged with the group name that they belong to, making using the encyclopedia much simpler. We're also going to add the master admin group to the administrator. In order for the administrator to be able to administer the two groups that we've created, we also need to give the administrator access to these groups. So we'll add the team 1 group to the master admin and the team 2 group. In order to propagate these changes we need to publish the views. So from the tools menu we'll choose publish. And now we flip to encyclopedia manager where we choose the encyclopedia and switch on the workspaces schema. So that's tools, encyclopedia schema, workspaces schema. It warns us that this is not reversible. System architect will start up, the schema will change and we'll be returned to the encyclopedia manager. Now if we choose another database and flip back to workspace test, it will pick up the change from the tools menu, choose manage workspaces, and we can see that we have a root workspace. Right now our encyclopedia doesn't have a great deal in it. So we need one of the teams to contribute content to the encyclopedia. So what we're going to do is we're going to assign the administrator role to team 1. So team 1 can put their first lot of information into the encyclopedia. 
and then we'll publish the views again. Some time has passed and Team 1 has filled the encyclopedia with a load of data. We've actually done this by merging the samples encyclopedia in. We're going to create ourselves a new business goal, just so that we can see what would happen. Put a little bit of a description in. And now we'll flip to the end tab, Instance Permissions. In here we can see Permitted to Read Write Team 1. Now this was added by default because of the settings we put into the Catalog Manager. Let's open up one of the definitions that was merged in. And again we see in the Instance Permissions, Team 1. Anything that User 1 adds to the encyclopedia will have Team 1's group added to it for instance level access control. Just to show you on a diagram you have a similar concept. Instance Permissions is available and again Team 1 is permitted to read write. Let's flip back to Encyclopedia Manager and manage the workspaces. Choose the Encyclopedia, Tools, Manage Workspaces. Let's give the root workspace a more interesting name, initial project, and a description. Actually, we'll call it Master V1. And we'll baseline it and apply the change. Now you see it's become locked. From this, we can create child workspaces. Let's create a workspace for Team 1 to continue their work in. And another one for Team 2. We can add a description to this too. Team 1's ongoing work. And Team 2 joins the project. Apply those changes. We're also going to add a Master V2 flow. Now this will become the next master workspace. Flipping back to Catalog Manager, we now want to set up some permissions on these workspaces. This is a feature that was introduced in 11.4.0.1. First we're going to remove the temporary administrator permission for Team 1 for the entire encyclopedia. We only put this in there so that they could add their initial work. Now we can see the encyclopedia permissions for the various users and groups. OK, we'll expand the workspaces and we can see the Team 1 and Team 2 workspaces that we created. Now we're going to add the group Team 1 to our Team 1 workspace and the group Team 2 to our Team 2 workspace. If we expand, we can see them here. Now we need to add roles for these. What we're going to say is that they're administrators of their own workspace. This means they have permission to access all of the things in their workspace. And here we can see if we expand the roles, the administrator roles being added. As before, we need to publish the views. Tools, publish views. OK, now we're back in System Architect. With user 1 logged in, and he's just chosen the Master V2 workspace. And let's see how things look. Let's open up a business goal, one which previously he had access to. Notice it says read only. Now this is because user 1 and uh, his team do not actually have access to the Master V2 workspace in spite of the permitted to read write permission that's available to them. 
So let's see what happens if user one logs into his team's workspace. Now if we open up the same business goal, you'll see it is read write. Now let's see how Team 2's workspace looks to user 1. Again we'll open the same business goal, one that Team 1 had access to. Notice that it's read only because Team 1 does not have read write access to this workspace. Ok let's switch users and log in as user 2, a member of Team 2 and access the Master V2 workspace. We'll access the business goal and not surprisingly it's read only. The instance permissions are for team 1 and they also don't have access to this workspace for read write. Let's flip to team 2's workspace and access the same definition. Still read only and this is just now due to the fact that they have team 1's permissions set in there. So let's create their first business goal. Team 2's goal. Okay, if we flip to the instance permissions, you'll see it's Team 2 now. Flipping users again, we'll go back to user 1 and access Team 2's workspace. Let's open the new definition that they created. Team 2's goal. And you'll see we have read only access. This is due to the permissions, Team 2, and also the fact that we only have read only access to their workspace. As you see by opening up a definition which we do have access to in our own workspace, it's read only because we don't have access in their workspace. 